Hello everyone, and welcome to my Days of Our Lives 24 channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Steve and John have new designs for Clyde at the asylum, Tate stressed over his future, considering that Holly didn't recall the occasions from the evening of her excess. At the point when Sloane showed up, Teresa declared that Sloane had assumed control over Tate's case from Justin. Tate retold his account of the evening of Holly's excess to Sloane. At the point when Tate got done, Sloane stressed whether a jury would trust Tate's story in the event that the case went to preliminary. Tate and Teresa were confident the case would try not to go to preliminary, however Sloane noticed that the case was private to E.J. Sloane recommended that she organize a request bargain. Tate said that it was BS, and he demanded that he misunderstood entirely sat idle. At the point when Sloane ventured away, Teresa urged Tate to heed Sloane's guidance. Tate held out trust that Holly would recapture her recollections and clear him of any bad behavior. Sloane returned, and she requested to address Teresa in private. After Teresa stood up, Tate detected Teresa's telephone across a table. Sloane let Teresa know that she intended to document a conventional objection against EJ with an end goal to have him eliminated from Tate's case because of inclination and absence of objectivity. Sloane said that she wanted Tate to remain sharp in the occasion his case went to preliminary. Sloane said that she was unable to ensure a result for Tate, however she vowed to do all that she could to help. Teresa said thanks to Sloane. Back at the table, Tate snatched Teresa's telephone and reserved it in his pocket. Minutes after the fact, Teresa returned. Teresa told Tate not to surrender. Tate said that he wouldn't, and he and Teresa said that they adored each other. At the point when Teresa left, Tate utilized Teresa's telephone to attempt to make an impression on Holly through a virtual entertainment account that had a place with Teresa. At the Demera Manor, Holly was excited when Eric followed Nicole into Holly's room. After Eric and Holly embraced, Nicole ventured out. At the point when Holly educated Eric regarding the evening of her excess, Eric found that there was something Holly wasn't telling him. Holly said that New Year's Eve was as yet obscure for her. Nicole returned, and she spouted over photographs of Jude that Eric had been showing Holly. Eric shared that he had held on until Nicole and Holly had gotten back to Salem before he and Sloane initiated Jude. Nicole proposed facilitating an initiating function at the Demera house. Eric said that Sloane would almost certainly object. In the end, Holly and Nicole convinced Eric to examine the proposal with Sloane. Afterward, in the lounge room of the manor, Holly assisted Nicole with anticipating Jude's dedicating. Nicole put her arms around Holly, and she said she didn't have any idea what she would have done in the event that Holly hadn't awoken from her unconsciousness. Holly said that Nicole was a survivor, and she said she would have rather not discuss New Year's Eve once more. Nicole concurred that she and Holly would zero in on the dedicating service. Nicole and Holly said that they cherished each other. At the point when Nicole rose up to take off, Holly's telephone ringed. Holly noticed that she had gotten a message via virtual entertainment from Teresa. Why on earth is Tate's mom sliding in my DMs? Apologies, woman. No time for you. I host a gathering to design, Holly expressed pretentiously as she overlooked the message. At Sloane and Eric's condo, Leo kept an eye on, who before long started crying. After he changed a diaper, Leo supported Jude. Leo started to recount to Jude the account of the night Jude had been conceived, and he alluded to Sloane as an insidious, awful, bottle-blonde, underhanded witch. Okay, that is just a tad unreasonable. We don't be aware without a doubt that she's a jug blonde, Leo joked. Leo grinned at Jude, and he appeared to have certified fondness for the child. Leo developed profound when he saw that Jude had begun to grin at Leo. Minutes after the fact, Leo wore a rap craftsman's outfit, and he rapped for Jude. Eric entered, and he was dazzled that Jude appeared to like Leo. Eric discovered that Sloane had asked Leo to look after children, he noticed that Leo and Jude appeared to get along. Sloane got back as Leo arranged to leave. Eric said that Leo had worked effectively watching. Eric educated Sloane concerning Nicole's proposal to have the initiating service at the Demera Manor. OMG, Nicole is the very best. Furthermore, the Demera Manor, what an ideal scene, Leo faked as Sloane's face became surrendered. 
At Wendy and Tripp's loft, Steve, John, and Ava kept on looking for signs on the most proficient method to track down Tripp and Wendy. Ava talked by telephone to somebody in her family, and she shared that the Vitali family had consented to help in the pursuit. What did it set you back? Steve inquired. Ava said that her family had consented to do her a once favor and that she would manage the outcomes later, would it be a good idea for them they emerge? Steve, John, and Ava concurred that they required any assistance they could get. As them three took a gander at diagrams of Statesville, Ava went through an agenda of things they wanted to use to break Clyde out of jail. As Steve and John arranged to take off, they said that they expected to get some unique gear. Ava discovered that Steve and John intended to kidnap and grill Clyde about Trip and Wendy's area. Steve said that he and John had no designs to permit Clyde to leave Salem. Ava pushed back, and she said deceiving Clyde was crazy. Ava got some information about Trip's security. Steve contemplated that Clyde could leave Salem without sharing where Trip was being held, and he demanded that he and John would hold Clyde until he uncovered Trip's area. Ava and Steve squabbled about Steve and John's choice, and she asked the men to allow Clyde to leave Salem. Steve, it is the value we must compensation to save our child, Ava said. Steve paid attention to Ava's concerns, yet that's what he said permitting Clyde to leave Salem wasn't a choice. John favored Steve, who repeated that they intended to compel Clyde to uncover Trip and Wendy's area. Ava hesitantly consented to Steve and John's arrangement, and she said that all she needed was for Trip to securely get back. Steve swore that he and John had all that they expected to manage Clyde. On the whole, we have a jail to break into, John said with a bit of pride. Steve and John took off. Steve and John, fueled by a shared determination to bring justice to Salem, devise a bold new plan to confront Clyde and put an end to his reign of terror once and for all. Recognizing the danger he poses to the community, they pool their resources and expertise to devise a strategy that will finally bring him to justice. Drawing upon their years of experience and intimate knowledge of Clyde's tactics, Steve and John meticulously plan each step of their operation, leaving nothing to chance. With unwavering resolve, they set their sights on dismantling Clyde's criminal empire and restoring peace to Salem. But as they delve deeper into their investigation, they soon realize that confronting Clyde will require them to push the boundaries of the law and venture into dangerous territory. Undeterred, Steve and John steel themselves for the challenges ahead, knowing that the safety of their loved ones and the future of Salem depend on their success. As they prepare to execute their plan, tensions run high, and the stakes grow higher with each passing moment. With the fate of the town hanging in the balance, Steve and John must navigate a treacherous landscape of deceit and betrayal, relying on their wits and instincts to outmaneuver Clyde at every turn. But as they close in on their target, they soon discover that Clyde is more cunning and ruthless than they ever imagined. With time running out and danger lurking around every corner, Steve and John must summon all of their courage and resourcefulness to confront Clyde and bring him to justice before it's too late. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.